Hello, I'm back. I have just returned from the cruise in New Zealand and Australia. So, is there still a chance to catch up with AMC problems? I'd say better than average. First of all, let's look at the diagram with a parabola that contains the given two points. By definition, a parabola is the set of points equidistant from one point called focus and one straight line called directrix. Since two points with coordinates 4, 3 and minus 4, minus 3 must have equal distance from a directrix, each directrix is parallel to the straight line that goes through these two points. Since points 4, 3 and minus 4, minus 3 are symmetric with respect to point O, this line goes through center O as well. The distance between this line and each directrix is equal to 5, since 5 is the distance between each of two points 4, 3 and minus 4, minus 3 and center O by Pythagorean theorem. Then the vertex of each parabola denoted by letters V and V prime, depending on which directrix is chosen, must also be equidistant from center O and its corresponding directrix. That places it in the middle of the perpendicular dropped from center O to its respective directrix. That same line is the axis of symmetry of each parabola. For example, two given points 4, 3 and minus 4, minus 3 are symmetric with respect to this line. Thus, the distance of vertex V or V prime from center O is equal to 5 over 2. Let's rename the coordinates as follows. Let's call the original coordinates M and N instead of X and Y, since we need to count only the points with integer coordinates. And let's denote the new axis of coordinates that goes through points minus 4, minus 3, 0, 0, and 4, 3 by letter X and the perpendicular axis that goes through point 0, 0 by letter Y. Then axis Y is the axis of symmetry of this parabola, and axis X goes through its focus, which should simplify writing the equation for this parabola. Now we can come to the conclusion that the answer to this problem is the same, regardless of which directrix and which corresponding parabola we examine. It's because both parabolas have the same axis of symmetry. Each of these two parabolas can be obtained from the other one by rotating it 180 degrees around the origin of coordinates. In this rotation, each point with coordinates m, n moves to the point with coordinates minus m, minus n. If m and n are both integer, then minus m and minus n are obviously both integer as well, and the constraints, the absolute value of 4m plus 3n is not greater than 1000, is either true or false for both pairs, m, n, and minus m, minus n. So it suffices to solve this problem only considering one directrix and one parabola with vertex v that is shown on this diagram. We can see that the point that has m, n coordinates 4 and 3 has x, y coordinates 5 and 0. The x, y coordinates of vertex v are 0 and minus 5 over 2. The corresponding m, n coordinates of vertex v are easy to calculate since they are the lengths of two sides of the right triangle that is similar to the right triangle formed by the point with m, n coordinates 4 and 3. Prove it as a home exercise. So coordinate m of vertex v is equal to 3 fifth of the hypotenuse of that triangle and coordinate n of that point is equal to minus 4 fifth of the same hypotenuse since this triangle is similar to the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Thus the m, n coordinates of vertex v are 3 over 2 and minus 2. Now we are at the crossroads on our path to solving this problem. 
We can work with straight lines as the graphs of linear functions and use the formula for the distance between a point and a straight line. But if you don't remember that formula, we can try to solve this problem from scratch, so to speak, by using just elementary geometry and algebra. The only piece of mathematical theory we need to know is the so-called linear transformation of Cartesian coordinates that takes place when an orthogonal system of coordinates is rotated around its center by some angle, which is exactly what happens in this problem. In our notation, the transformation of coordinates can be written as x equals am plus bn and y equals cm plus dn, where four constant real numbers, a, b, c, and d, represent the linear transformation matrix. To find these four constants, it suffices to have two points that do not lie on a line parallel to any of the four axes of coordinates, m, n, x, and y, and for which we know all four coordinates, m, n, x, and y. Then by simply plugging all four coordinates of each point into these equations, we can find the constant values of a, b, c, and d. By doing it for our points, we find the values of A and B, and then values of C and D. And as a result, we get our conversion formulas from MN coordinates to X and Y coordinates. Now we can write the equation of this parabola in X and Y coordinates. Since we know x and y coordinates of two points of this parabola, one of which is the vertex, we can plug these coordinates into the general equation and find the values of coefficients a and b. Since y-axis is the axis of symmetry for this parabola, we know that y equals ax squared plus b must be the equation of this parabola. The result of this calculation is the equation 10y plus 25 equals x squared. We could figure out this equation by using the definition of parabola with the focus and directrix. But for consistency, we used the same approach that we used for the conversion formulas. If we substitute y in the left side of this equation by its formula for m and n and simplify it, the resulting equation proves that any point that lies on this parabola whose m and n coordinates are integer also have integer x coordinate. Since the left side of this equation is integer, the right side must also be integer. Another interesting result, not even related to parabola, is that for any point whose n, m, and x coordinates are integer, its y coordinate is also integer. Indeed, if we assume that three numbers, m, n, and x, are integer, and examine the expression 3x minus y, and simplify this expression, the result will be 3m plus n, which is also an integer number. That proves that y is in this case also integer. If we go back to our equation of parabola, 10y plus 25 equals x squared, and rewrite it in the form y equals x plus 5 times x minus 5 divided by 10, then it becomes obvious that x and y in this equation can be integer only if the lowest digit of x is 5, or in strict terms x is congruent to 5 modulo 10. We need to count such numbers, x, that satisfy the constraint absolute value of 4m plus 3n, not greater than 1000. Since the formula for x is 4m plus 3n divided by 5, we can rewrite this constraint as absolute value of x is not greater than 200. And we can count that there are 20 such positive numbers, starting with 5 and ending with 195, and 20 negative numbers from minus 5 to minus 195. And this corresponds to the answer B, the total number 40. 
But actually, we have proved that only these 40 values of x are candidates for the correct solutions. What if not all of them have m n coordinates integer, and the real number of solutions is less than 40? To answer this question, we must find the formula for the linear transformation from x and y coordinates to m and n coordinates. For that, we can use the same two points we used before and plug the coordinates into these general equations to find the values of coefficients a, b, c, and d, the linear transformation matrix, to verify that both this formula have 5 in the denominator, which proves that if our valid points x and y are integer and multiple of 5, then uh, their coordinates m and n are integer as well, which proves that our answer is correct.